In this clip, I'll talk about the nature of probability and randomness, and I'll also give a description of why repeatable independent data can be a good thing. For those more interested in a concrete example, the next part of the series will be better. Repeatable experiments are experiments that you and others can do several times. For instance, you could measure the width of your room, uh, again and again again and again, or get other people to do it for you. Now, in a perfect world, a measurement would give you exactly what you're after. Uh, in this case, the width of your room. And in such a case, there would be no point in measuring one more time. But in the real world, measurements are fraught with errors, so you will not gain perfect knowledge with one single measurement. If you repeat the measurement, you will typically get a slightly different result. Because you stretch the measurement band a little differently, or because of the non-perfect ways your eyes and minds assess the millimeters or fractional inches at the end of the band. You can, however, treat your measurements as data that says something relevant about what you're really after, in this case the width of your room. So you can update your probabilities for the models, in this case the different possible widths of your room, with your new found data, the measurements of the width of the room. As could be seen in the last clip, if you add information that totally depends on what you already know, this will not update your model probabilities at all. Conversely, if you add relevant information that you cannot accurately predict in advance, this means that you've gained new insight into the models. If you can assume that you can gather independent data repeatably, that means that you will always be able to get wiser. Now, what do I mean about independent data? As you may remember from clip 6, or for that matter the mathematical foundation presented in clip 2b, the independence between A and B is when the probability of A given B is the probability of A, and the same vice versa. Or phrased a little differently, the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. Now if data is gathered so that each piece of information says a little about which models are probable or not, you will necessarily change your probabilities for future data, so when I say independent data, this is not what I've got in mind. Rather, it's the notion that for each of the models I'm contemplating, the data will be independent. That is, the probability of D1, D2, D3 given model M1 is equal to the probability of D1 given M1 times the probability of D2 given M1 times the probability of D3 given M1. And the same goes for another model, M2. One example could be the measurement of your room. If you measured it to be 5.05 meters the first time, it would be very unexpected to measure it to 2.86 meters the next time. However, if you, your room really is, for instance, 5.00 meters, then knowing that you measured it to be 5.05 meters will not help you to predict what the next measurement will be, which you may see as random but centered around 5.00 meters. So conditioned on the models, the data are independent. The really neat thing about repeated independent data is that since you've got new information all the time, you can start to contemplate more accurate models and detect differences in prediction powers in models that are only slightly different from each other. And differences in prediction power yields differences in model probabilities. Note that in the measurement example you may have uncertainties that are not repeated, such as inaccuracies in the measurement tape or a bias in the way you read of the measurements. So, you may fool yourself when you think that you can gain as much insight as you like about the room itself by simply measuring the room enough times. It could pay off to look more closely into the quality of your measurements, rather than just relying on quantity of experiments. 
or you could perform different kinds of experiments where the measurement bias isn't repeated, such as using different measurement tapes, different measurement methods, or different people with different ways of reading of the measurement tape. The notion that you can get different results each time you perform an experiment may cloud your judgment about probability a little. The data probability could be seen as an attribute of the experiment itself, rather than your knowledge about the experiment. This is the notion supported by the competitor of Bayesian probability, so-called frequentist probability. Their probability is seen as something objective, often in the strong sense of not depending on what knowledge is available or not, uh, but rather an attribute of external, uh, external reality, true randomness. In such a case, you divide up uncertainties into physically random events and things that are only uncertain because you lack knowledge. And with such a division, a frequentist will handle these two types of uncertainties very differently from each other. In this strong interpretation of physical probability, applications of probability theory becomes rather limited, I think. For instance, we like to think of dice throws as random. You repeat a dice throw and you get a different result. Well, do you? I mean, if you did manage to repeat the way you throw a die, the Newtonian laws of motion tells you that you'll get the same result each time. And the Newtonian laws are well up to the task of calculating what the outcome will be, given the initial state of the die when you threw it. The reason you get new results each time is that you are not repeating the die throw. You are, however, repeating your lack of knowledge about how these throws differ. You lack control of the initial states, and you don't know how these different initial states transform into the final state of the die. The thing about physical systems is that the small uncertainty tend to grow in time. In the extreme case of chaotic systems, these uncertainties grow exponentially, but even for more well-behaved systems, the uncertainty will typically grow, just not exponentially. Here's a double-jointed swinging rod. And here's the same rod with a twin started with only one-tenth of a degree difference in the initial angle. At one moment you can barely discern a difference, the next split second the two systems are as different as they can be. You could put the person rolling the die into the description of the experiment and imagine that this person rolling the die is repeated. But a discussion on whether this is truly random or not will quickly devolve into a quarrel about free will. I'm not going to go there now. Yet frequentists do use probabilities for throwing dice, for non-quantum mechanical measurements, for the future weather and for other stuff that is deemed random. A more pragmatic objective probability in the weak sense can be constructed for dice throws. This kind of objective probability is made by noticing that in ordinary dice throws no human has any way to predict the outcome beyond what symmetry tells us. Everyone has the same relevant knowledge, namely that the die has six sides and that's it. The point here is that it matters not what knowledge is hypothetically possible to gain. Rather most or everyone agrees on what knowledge is of interest to the conditional. But if a frequentist has such a pragmatic attitude toward what is and isn't randomness, one can wonder why not simply go for the Bayesian version. If the state of being random depends on whether you can imagine repeating an event with the same knowledge, it will be a highly subjective term and the choice of analysis will thus also be highly subjective. So instead of relying on fast talking in order to divide up the world into random events handled with probabilities and other uncertainties handled differently, why not treat all 
uncertain this with the same tool, probability. There is one good thing about methods attached to frequentism, which I may explore in later videos. Using a frequentist uh, method can be quick, quick and dirty. In this case though, the bit about it being dirty is not meant as another selling point. 